meat, meaning in media. Primarily, I have included this book as the described text, myth and meaning. Uh, and surface structure. It seems very simple, small book, few pages. Uh, Professor Velika Dhrutra has told me that she has taught this book in anthropological theory. Therefore, uh, today you will find many repetitions. I support. But uh, I have my own experience of cloud levy stress. This is a difficult book. Small, good to read, difficult to understand. Therefore, uh, Although you have been taught this book, but given my incapacity, I am a very simple preliminary teacher. Uh, I am not very advanced in my understanding, therefore I do not uh, expect anything from my student. I will teach from this scratch. It may be repetitive and boring, but I am sorry. Uh, I am like this only. I do not expect that a particular teacher in another course must have taught and therefore I should not begin from the beginning. My request will be, you please begin with this book. This is fat but very simple, very lucid, very comprehensive. You know, whenever I read this book, I started reading it uh, on 4th and this is Seventh, and uh, I have got notes from every page. I will share with you the quotations from this book, but I will tell you frankly, I read it many times earlier also, but whenever I read this, I have to consult this even now. You know, therefore, in case you are interested in cloud levy stores, although there will be many questions. Uh, around six question in, in semester exam and uh, you need to not answer this question the question is why i am telling like this i have a reason i i had a teacher who is still alive his name is andre bete we called him as visiting faculty uh, of the center uh, the year was 2006 and uh, some of us were there because there are many teachers who are new to the system. And uh, uh, Andre asked who is teaching Levi Strauss these days. Dipangar Gupta said, uh, I understand only the first part of the elementary structures of kinship. I have tried. Dipangar is a big name in our center. And I am quoting him verbatim, not to frighten you, but to empower you. The Panther said uh, that uh, he tried many times because he was teaching anthropological theory, which Professor Mehrutra is teaching these days, but he could understand only the first part of the elementary structures of kinship. And then Andre Mete said, I do not understand even the first part. Therefore, we manage in the new school of economics with Radcliffe Brown, Mayor Forte, and Malinowski. Uh, this book, uh, Levi Strauss, is uh, taught by uh, JPS Uberat and uh, Minadas. But uh, even they are not the ardent followers of uh, Cloud Levi Strauss. Then Susan Viswanathan asked, Why, sir? Andre said because, you know, when he is dealing with kinship, at least we understand the key terms he is using. But when he starts dealing with myths, 
we do not understand anything even now uh, then uh, andre said sarcastically of course uh, among us only amit sarma uh, is a very ardent uh, fan of devi stores i said yes sir because he wrote one book called the inventory structures of chemistry and uh, there are two volumes of structural anthropology actually there are three but then you know only two volumes are available the third volume had only recently been translated into english you know but he had wrote seven books on mythology therefore in case you have to do justice to a scholar a person you should also give proportionate you know uh, emphasis or significance to the uh, quantity also to the quantity also seven books on mythology therefore and this is the last book this is the last book actually this is not a book this is a series of five lectures given by cloud levistos in the year 1977 and uh, it was published in 1978 for the first time now why 77 or 78 is important because he gave the lecture in december 1977 and by february 1979 we have iranian revolution now what is the connection the connection is that uh, european modernity primarily in 17th century and 18th century claimed that religion is dead myths are superstitious meaningless past time of primitive people and uh, by 17th century it was uh, established canon in science now many people revolted against state in europe itself and uh, two names uh, i i would like to in a state today one is fetic nietzsche and second is his follower uh, martin heidegger uh, but uh, up to levi strauss uh, started writing these two people uh, fetic nietzsche and martin heidegger had no influence in the mainstream social science are you getting the point post modernism emerged in late 60s namely 1966 the first publication is i think 1968 and then by 69 post modernism or post structuralism these are two different things are very very well respected intellectual movement in europe and united states of america and this book was published in 1978 the significance of this book will be obvious to you when i give you the quotations and which we will interpret in the class uh, rather in my class notes i have already interpreted it now what i wanted to say is that uh, iranian revolution was the first significant uh, religious phenomenon which was seriously taken debated discussed reviewed deconstructed and had there been no ayatullah khomeini there would have been no talala sir no asan bal gangadhar no maki marriott no jp subera now what i wanted to say is that you know this is politically incorrect but let me say it was a brutal napoleon who popularized the ideals of french revolution had there been no napoleon french revolution would have been a local phenomena of paris one town in france had there been no alexander aristotle would have been a local philosopher of athens had there been 
no Lenin or Mao, Marx would have been a forgotten philosopher. I am not saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you should take Lenin or uh, Mao or uh, Alexander or Napoleon very seriously. But you must try to understand, unless in, uh, until ideas are transformed into events, public memory does not take continents. Had there been no Ayatollah Khomeini, nobody would have read this book. Had there been no Ayatollah Khomeini, Talal Asad or Esat Bal Gangadhar would not had dared to challenge the European canon, which was myth, but which was claimed to be scientific theory. Therefore, the first line which, you know, which strikes to the reader of this book is that myth is history and history is myth. Myth is history and history is myth. The second line which strikes in this book is that uh, there is a magazine called The Scientific American. You know, you have India Today, you have Newsweek, you have many other journals which or magazines, popular magazines which you may be reading. Uh, Levi Strauss was reading the scientific uh, American magazine and he's trying to say that the language of the scientific American is structurally very similar to the language of mythology of the Australians and African primitive people got the point. In both the books, The Savage Mind and uh, Myth and Meaning, Cloud Levi Strauss is trying to share with you three significant factors which influence our understanding, comprehension and communication. And what are these? These are myth, meaning and media. Now what do you mean by media? What do you mean by myth and what do you mean by meaning? These are all very technical terms. Now for example, take the last word, media. Whenever you say media, you know, the common people understand newspaper, isn't it? Because it is what Habermas highlighted in the book, The Public Sphere. The newspaper, printed newspaper, was very important factor in the construction and constitution of public sphere in 18th century Germany. Okay, then people have said that novels, you know, a literary journal had played a very significant role in the spread of nationalism as a political creed in 19th century. In the same way today, internet and social media is shaping the language of social discourse. Cloud Levin Strauss is trying to say in both the books that these are not only mediums through which communication takes place. Newspapers, television news, internet, these are also mediums, but priests are also medium, and storytellers are also medium, prophets are also medium, market is also medium, classroom is also a medium, Friendship is also a medium. Hatred is also a medium. What he requests you is that try to understand the inner principle, the structural principle which helps you organize different 
discrete facts. In the same way, what is meaning? Meaning is signified by certain words or gestures. For example, you meet a person from China and you do not know the Chinese language. How do you interact with him or her? Because you do not know Chinese and they do not know your language. Then how will you interact with him or her? Most probably by gestures and postures, isn't it? Now, Levi Stor said it is one thing, but there is another thing. You know, there are two people of the same culture, they speak the same language. For example, take the English language. There are two words, irrational and rational. Disorder and order. These are polar opposites. We and they, again polar opposite. Friends and enemies, again polar opposite. Let me stop ask the question. Very stupid, very childlike, innocent question. How do you understand the irrational? How do you understand disorder? How do you understand prejudice? How do you understand, uh, uh, you know, superstition? And his answer is, in the same way in which we understand the polar opposite of these terms. For example, you understand the irrational the way you understand the rational. You know, the process of understanding or the principle of classifying the rational, you know, it subconsciously or sometimes unconsciously used to understand the polar object. Got it? How do you hate the other? How do you hate anybody? The way you love anybody? I think I'm not making you happy. Uh, therefore, let me quote from him. And then we will discuss. We have five pages. And uh, this is the last page I was discussing. Uh, this book. Page number 7-8. First I am quoting and then we will discuss. There is a method in my this chaotic teaching. And try to understand that, that method. This is called a structural method of teaching. This is a structural method of teaching. Therefore, suppose I take more interest in you, then what will be my method? I will not try to plead you. I will try to antagonize you. Why? Because this is human nature that you ignore those who loves you. But you take your enemies very seriously. You know, remember your childhood. You must have, uh, you know, you must have had uh, likeness, friendship, trust. You may not remember that so easily. You must be remembering those who gave you pain, you know, agony, trauma. In psychoanalysis, uh, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, they call it trauma. 
you know what is this these are complex you know for example oedipus complex or electra complex these are freudian terms and what are the jungian terms archetype you know now uh, what is the uh, uh, jungian term for myth anybody knows according to uh, you know uh, carl jung myths are collective unconscious myths are collective unconscious and what are myths for sigmund freud they are collective repressed libido now uh, we are not discussing uh, sigmund freud we are not discussing carl jung we are discussing claude levi strauss at the moment and and i have got uh, two quotations and then i have tried to supplement it by my own notes first page number 78 structuralism according to levi strauss the structuralism had bridged the gap the structuralism had bridged the gap between a you try to make a note it will make your uh, your work easier a structuralism had bridged the gap between a traditional codes and modern codes a structuralism had bridged the gap between traditional codes and modern codes b hard sciences and humanities and social sciences now i have got the equations this is not from the book this is my notes uh, only uh, three sentences A sentence first A structuralism had bridged the gap between a traditional codes and modern codes b hard sciences and humanities and social sciences only three, three sentences now i have got the equations what does it mean for our class today it means geology a hard science geology is equal to biology geology is equal to biology and biology is equal to linguistics and linguistics is equal to anthropology and anthropology is equal to physics and physics is equal to mathematics and mathematics is equal to mythology you you remember uh, agas pont here again you have levi strauss and in case you get this equation this is point 1 then the whole debate between durkheim and weber becomes meaningless because what is weberian view that social sciences are not sciences in the same way in which physics is a science you know the whole weberian sociology based on a very sharp separation you know between hard sciences and social sciences or humanities there is a hard separation unbridgeable separation in weber between the hard sciences and the soft sciences now number 2 uh levi strauss said science had only two types science had only two types first that is a reductionist and second a structuralist my uh, you know uh, interpretation reductionist means the study of processes reductionist science means the study of processes for example physico chemical processes example nature had only a limited number of procedures at her disposal and what is that called the genetic code therefore how do uh, you or i understand nature through genetic 
food and uh, how culture is uh, understood today in contemporary social science through cultural code now genetic code helps us understand natural processes and cultural code empowers us to understand the cultural processes now what is the levi straussian structuralism levi strauss says that although although the substance of the substance of nature and culture is different but both can be studied by the same formal rules form versus substance both can be studied by the same structural principles structural rules in other words nature is equal to culture for claude levi strauss and both are studied by reductionist sciences and the study of processes of natural phenomena and social phenomena or cultural phenomena now what is a structuralist study or a structuralist science you may make a note in case you are interested the structuralist study tries to understand natural phenomena or social phenomena by classificatory processes of codes by the classificatory processes of codes or formal structures these are two important propositions in this book on page number 7 8 now my commentary and when i say my commentary i am differentiating between levi strauss and my interpretation you may disagree with my interpretation and you can give a better interpretation but his rules will remain the same my interpretation is and you 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 try to develop your own interpretation i have interpreted it like this a structural study of myth a structural study of myth is the quest of invariant principle of classification a structural study of myth is the quest of invariant principle of classification of irrational or disorder as well as rational and order and the structuralist hypothesis is this there is a formal homology homology means sadharmita homology have you heard the term the english term is similarity uniformity now for example uh, when we say man and woman are equal it does not mean that their anatomy is similar or uniform what we mean is that as a unit as a whole woman and man they are homologous homologous not abused uh, we are trying to say that although at surface structure newtons signs in quotes at surface structure newtons signs or einstein's signs or darwin's signs may appear very different from the signs contained in the hebrew bible the new testament the quran the vedas 
or the Dhamma Pada. They are very unlike each other, you know. But it is not only that they are the foundation of a moral community, a collective consciousness. It is one aspect. Cloud Levis Strauss is also saying the structural argument in Newton is similar to the structural argument in the Vedas or the Quran or the Hebrew Bible or Dhammapada. This is something which the modern people find it very difficult to grasp. You know why? Because of propaganda brainwashing. The public intellectuals have been brainwashed, bombarded with, you know, propagandist slogans. That the modern is better than the traditional. This man challenges this in both the books. And I'm giving you his experience. And I'm reading it from the beginning. Claude Levi Strauss says that up to, six, up to 16th century, from Adam to 16th century, myths were sacred. From Adam, a Muslim will say Adam, a Hindu will say Manu. Names are different, but they are referring to the first man on earth. Of course, Charles Darwin will say it was not the man who came first, but amoeba. But how do you understand amoeba? He would like to argue you understand amoeba in the same way in which you understand man. How do you understand the other, the unknown, the dark, you know, the black? How your mind captures the other, the unknown, you know? Your, your logical mind proceeds from known to unknown. Therefore, you know, uh, I also teach a course on cinema. And uh, once I was giving a lecture in IIT Delhi. I said that, uh, they asked me, what is the difference between sociology of cinema and engineering? I said, uh, we are a science, you are technology. You are dependent on us. He said, how? I said because, you know, uh, you are your mother's son. He said, what had it to do with engineering? I said, you wanted to build a beautiful house or beautiful bridge. What is the foundation of beauty in your engineering mind? He said, I could not get it. I asked him, you know, had you an opportunity to love a woman, he was a man, incidentally. You know, he was, he was very insecure then because he thought I'd ask a question regarding engineering. I said, I'm, a, I'm discussing engineering and not human relationship. You know, whenever a person and you know an adult human body male or female is attracted to the other you know he or her concept of beauty is conditioned by the intimacy of the child with the mother therefore ask any generation who is the most beautiful hero or heroine of your generation and there will be a structure of the answer. For example, my age group. Who is the most beautiful woman for my generation? Marilyn Monroe? 
Or Malu Bala, why? Because when we were children, they were of the age of our mothers. Then you ask my son, he will not say Madhubala or Marlin Manro, but he will say Madhuri Dikchit and Britney Spears. Because they are roughly in the age group of his mother. The same is true about the woman. Are you getting the point? You know, you may joke at me, but I called him. This is how you make the bridge. This is how you make the uh, multiplex. This is how uh, you make the house. This is how you uh, uh, make a project of development of the so-called tribal primitive Africans. You are projecting your unconscious suppressed desires on others because you have the power to manipulate structures on ground in concrete. You know, what is the structure of the mind of the dictators? They are very insecure people. Most fundamentalists of the world are trained in technology and not in theology. You name me one fundamentalist from anywhere in the world who is a respected fundamentalist in his or her country of birth or domicile, he will be trained in modern sciences and not in traditional science of theology. Take our great India. There is a fundamentalist organization and all the major leaders are trained either in, in, in engineering or allopathic medicine. They are surgeons. It is very difficult for a poet to think of killing people just for wasted interest. It is very difficult for a religious person to think of massacre people. Those who can massacre or butcher people or you know plants or trees are unloved, uncared, insecure people. And why this? There is a line. Levi Strauss. He says, Mintz was sacred. It had a vital role in human history. Mintz are essential to provide meaning of life, society and human history. The non-modern mind was not less developed, rather the primitive man was using, please remember this, write this, according to Claude Lévi-Strauss, according to Lévi-Strauss, the modern the non-modern mind, the non-modern mind was not less developed, full stop, rather the primitive man was using more of their mental capacities, more of their mental capacities than the so-called modern and scientific mind after 17th century. Uh, I'm giving you the full paragraph. Uh, myths are, uh, myths were sacred. Myths were sacred, full stop. It had a vital role in human history, full stop. Myths are essential to provide meaning of life, comma, society and human history. Full stop. The non modern mind, the non modern mind was not less developed. Full stop. Rather, the primitive man, here, man includes woman. You know, uh, this, is, uh, this is the limitation of a language that. Unfor or unfortunately, most books are written by men. 
you know it doesn't mean that uh, women uh, are less worthy of uh, uh, writing you know uh, it is something else which i will discuss tomorrow uh, it is again related with mythology raja the primitive man was using more of their mental capacities than the so called modern and scientific mind after 17th century i would like to give three examples one example is that i i will give rather a real example i was a student of graduation and uh, i had gone to participate in a debate competition uh, in a college which was devoted to the study of mines indian institute of mines and then there was one scientist of that institute he was the director of that institute radha uh, who was trying to give a lecture she was very serious and uh, i was the same savage which i am mischievously you know it was a very serious seminar and they were discussing engineering of mining i said tabula rasa you know the meaning of tabula rasa uh, it is there i, I discuss with you and they all uh, you know started looking at the mad person who said tabula rasa i was drawing you know their attention i said sir can you sing everybody was very furious very angry you know they are discussing engineering of mines you know how more more minerals can be mined to develop a very undeveloped state they said you are so young don't you know you can uh, be thrown out uh, after uh, uh, thrown out from the room i said why sir because we are discussing something serious and you are so non serious i said uh, i am very serious sir but unfortunately you people are very non serious about life you are serious about your theories but theories are only 1% of life he said why i said because you know today you ate a particular type of breakfast and i narrated you know the menu i said why you are saying like this because it is it is written on your face sir and the other man is a good singer he wanted to be a singer but nobody allowed him to sing and therefore whenever he is speaking you, you you are not watching his gestures and postures he is not uh, teaching you mechanics he is teaching you suppressed you know poetry allow him to sing and he will thank all of us what you people are doing you are not utilizing the left brain you are only utilizing your right brain you know where is your brain located when i was a child you know they thought it is here therefore when, when something unfortunate happened they will do this it means kya ho gaya what happened 
Then I said one grandmother, brain is not located here, grandmother. It is located here. And this is not located in this part, it is located here. But you know, this brain affects your this hand and this brain affects your this hand. As a result, you will find in human society, most dirty work are done usually by the left hand. You made the left impure. But is it so? You are not utilizing your left brain because, your, because of your scientific prejudice. I got a foolish, enlightened teacher who was not appreciating the beauty of his wife. Because he thought in case he started praising the beauty of his wife, the wife, you know, it will go in her head and she will become arrogant. What I am trying to say is that the very basis of this classification that hard science is superior makes your life a misery. Most so-called intellectuals are very poor people emotionally. They do not know how to enjoy life. On the other hand, our so-called primitive people are much more rich. They eat fresh food. They express their emotions. They are in tune with nature. Their body clock is, is more accurate than the best of our clothes. There is no money, but there is a very developed barter system. You change the criteria of evaluation of the quality of life and then you will understand that, and this is politically incorrect and you have every right to protest. Modern men, middle class men and women do not know how to enjoy life. In case you wanted to know the richness of life, go to a tribal village, Dalit village, rural village of Denmark, Norway, <laughs> Buster, and then you will go. For example, there is a colony in Delhi of Bangladeshi refugee. And they are Muslims, but they are so fearful of the Indian state that they will conceal their name. You know, the death rate is very, very low in them. The immune system is very strong. Bangladesh is a poor country. In case your immune system is strong, you can withstand many adversities. Therefore, don't judge people, don't judge the other as inferior. Try to understand, have empathy. Empathy is not sympathy. Sympathy is, you know, some sort of daya, you know. You are doing charity by being positive to them. No. Empathy means try to understand the other so that you can get a new source of hope and happiness. The language of mythology is full of such wisdom tomorrow.